in studio, uh, we have a special guest uh, that believes in truth. Um, and, and I like that denominator. Everything that I've read on this gentleman, he wants to spread truth in knowledge in, in, in mankind. And, and I love that. We've got um, just a brief little audio I want to run before we bring him on microphone. Uh, he's talking about, I think, Jay-Z and Kanye West, something like that. Let's run this audio, Miko, before we uh, bring our guest. In. You know, and so, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, my, my mission is to actually get our people to a certain awareness and especially those that think that they know. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question. You see how he has this piece with Horus on there, wow. the eye of Horus on there? Mm -hmm. And you got the pyramids on here like this, like that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What kind of statement Kanye making? I wouldn't know until I talked to him. Mm -hmm. I had a long discussion with a co-worker about all those different signs on him and Jay-Z mm -hmm. and things like you know, I was like, well, he, he got to this, and that's, that's devil, devil worship. He's like, he's like, according to who? Who said it's devil worship, huh? Oh, a lot of people saying, like, you know, What's devil worship? Are you recording this? Huh? You recording this? Yeah, Let's record cool. this. Cause was, what is devil worship? <laughs> Let's be real, man. Jay, Jay's symbolically trying to tell people what's going on. Mm -hmm. See, people don't understand that they can't bluntly tell certain people things, but those that can see it's like masonry. Mm -hmm. They can throw up a signal. See them signals. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that there is only for those that can catch that. Mm -hmm. Jay-Z said in one of his songs, how could you falter when you're the rock of Gibraltar had to get off the boat to walk on water? Mm -hmm. What was he saying in that song? The rock of Gibraltar is the prudential sign outside people's houses. Mm -hmm. It says solid as a rock. The rock of Gibraltar is when Tariq, the Moor, crossed over from North Africa into Andalus, which is Spain, over the rock of Gibraltar. There's a horse called the rock of Gibraltar. That's mm -hmm. what it's called. The horse is a black horse or a brown horse, which is a stallion. What was Rocky called? The Italian stallion. Mm -hmm. You can. Ah, Brother Saeed Beer. Brother Saeed Beer. Did I say that right? I want to make sure I'm doing it right. <laughs> no, she didn't. Did I say your name right? No, I you didn't. didn't. I'm trying. I will practice it's, it's and practice. All love, sister. It's, all, it's all love. <laughs> so, so, so please say your name to the Mason Nation. Actually, it's Sabir. Sabir Bay. Sabir. And actually, I just Sabir got taken Bay. on. Yeah, okay. I just, yeah, I just got it taken on another name. Uh, a sister from Ethiopia gave me. It's Aksum. I was like, wow. She said, you got to have an Ethiopian name. I said, okay. That's what's up then. I'll take that. You know? Aksum, right? Yeah, A-X-U-M. Aksum. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right, we'll be back with awesome on Mason Radio. <laughs> he's, he's in Detroit, and he'll be speaking at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe. Cafe. We'll give you more details on that, but I can't wait to get into a discussion with you. We are Mason Radio, live in Detroit. <laughs> Cafe. I'm thinking tomorrow, correct? Yes. Will you be there tomorrow? Please. Yes. Yes. Is that how you feel? Yes. yes. I'm <laughs> good. Now, when I when I read about you, they say you're armed with an arsenal of history. You have experience in hip hop culture. You lecture coast to coast, and you shared the mic with one of my favorites, KRS One, yeah. Dev, Common, and I also Dick Gregory. So uh, tell me, and you're a radio personality, film producer, public speaker, and when people ask you your motivation, it, you, you say things like truth, uh, to keep That's people it. updated on real life issues. Talk to the Mason Nation. We want you in our nation. I want to say thank you, sis. I wish you was in this room <laughs> with me. I'm like, wait a minute, who is she? Like, I can't, I hear a voice. You know what I mean? I hear a voice. I see the brother sitting over there, though. I'm like, okay. You know, but um, um yeah, I actually... I want to, I, I'm, I'm a radio personality in, um, in L.A. actually right now. Okay. Um, okay. And I'm actually a personality in L.A. right now. Um, L.A. Talk Live, you know, and actually. Okay. Right. Yeah, man. So I've been out there for like a year doing that. 
Um, I'm doing film, and I'm actually I'm on a road right now with Africa Ben Bada because we do Hawaii as soon as we leave here. Wow. Yeah, we in Hawaii. That's so, what's up. <laughs> yo, yo, let me tell you, we actually get ready to do the City Hall show, too, and then when we get, we get to L.A. So Yay. it's oh, it's, it's crazy, right. man. If you travel with Bam, it's like history. It's like you walking with hip-hop. You know what I mean? So, right. It, yeah, so we doing Hawaii on the 20th to the 23rd, 24th. We doing a Zulu anniversary out there. Yeah. Excellent. So, and, um, okay. Yeah. So what, um, actually, the reason why I'm here to actually this weekend is because of the sister from 5E Gallery. And I don't know if y'all familiar with the 5E Gallery. It's, a, it's, a, um, it's for the youth, basically. Yeah, I know her. Yeah, Sister yeah. Piper. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, she, Piper, we love Piper. Yeah, I love her. That's man. right. Piper. I love, yo, she, Piper. She's, keeping, she's keeping hip-hop alive. I'm going to tell you, because I was there last yeah. night until probably 2 in the morning. You know what I mean? But I love what she's doing. And I heard you talking about the youth and the killings and stuff like that. And um, that's, what, that's where I come in at, because I was shot five times. You know, so I'm like... These cats in hip hop, it's like that's not real. It's we call it recording artists pretending. You know, it's not really mm. hip hop. Hip hop's a culture, and that's what I love about what she's doing. So when she called me, I said, "In a dead of winter, yes, I'll come." Okay, <laughs> you know, I'm from LA yes. right now, and I'm like, you know, 50 degrees. <laughs> no, you know, you're and, right. right? You know, you know, I heard y'all had my man Kevin Hart up in the building not too long ago, and I'm like, I know he's, you know, he's from LA, out in LA now, but we are both from Philly. You know what I mean? So we used to this weather. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But when you're in LA, okay. Now, you know, you get a little, you know, feel comfortable out there. But yeah, um, we're here for doing that. And um, actually, Sister Nandi, and I want to shout out to Sister Nandi. Um, she asked yes. me to stop past the cafe for tomorrow because it's so called Black History Month. And um, mm -hmm. and I say so called. Um, we're gonna talk. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk about a little bit of that truth. Um, there because there's a lot of stuff that's not really being told. And I want to thank y'all because I heard you. I heard you when um you were talking to the people. And I'm like, we need this platform. And, and, and what happens, the most powerful tool in our hands is the press. This is y'all. Y'all make every artist come across these tables. It's not the artists themselves. It's you who makes the people. You know, and I always say this to people, it's you. Because without you, the media, it wouldn't exist. It's, that's being real, you know. So y'all have to understand y'all power. So I want to give y'all a shout out. And shout out to Mason also, you know, for keeping this thing going, you know. So tomorrow we're going to be, about 2 o'clock, we're going to be talking about why is the so-called blacks don't have a nationality in America? You know, so that's going to be very powerful tomorrow. So, so can you give us just a little, just a little teaser, just a little bit? Uh, which one? What do you, what do you want? Um, just the, what you're going to talk about, because you uh, know we so. love uh, Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, and whenever she has a speaker, the Mason Nation really shows up. So just tease them a little bit it's, of what you guys uh, want to uh, talk man, about. One of, one of the things that I pulled out, and um that I had pulled out, and it was called this. It was an article that I said I was going to read. We was going to talk about civil rights, human rights the real issue behind those things. What are they? Why are we arguing civil rights instead of human rights violations? When you shoot somebody, a cop shoots somebody, why are they arguing civil rights? When I said human rights violation, we're going to build on that. Right. Um, there was an article taken um, that I found in D.C. when I was there from 1938. And this article was talking about um, will, the, will, the, uh, will Spain fall once before the Moors tribe that conquered her in 7-Eleven? You know, that's, if we're talking about so-called black history, well, why are we not talking about this article that was in Cleveland, Ohio? In 1938. All right. You know, okay. so these are the things that I'm going to bring up. And I have the article with me, and I was going to show people. So we're talking about so-called Black History Month. Number one, you can't relegate my history in one month. <laughs> Follow me? So okay. uh -huh. so you can't do that. So there are things like um, dealing with the stoplights I'm going to build on. Not necessarily that we invented it, but the colors itself comes from us. That's an Ethiopian color. You know, and I had a discussion That's with right. Europeans. Had our, our, um, our, our argument with this European. He said, well, tell me something that y'all invented. Talking about us. Because first of all, he thought I was black. And I said, no, I'm a Moor. I'm very conscious of who I am. So we got into the whole, uh, he started looking around and trying to find out what they invented. He looked at the stoplight and I said, no, that's Ethiopia. Red, yellow, and green. Yeah, we may created that. But the thing, you know, and I was saying, I don't wear anything that's European. When I say European, I mean white for those that don't understand saying so i was trying to explain to him and i said he looked at me and sold me with a pair of pumas on these are the things that i, I want to empower the youth with the, the the puma sneakers was the lion of judah the dita sneakers come from ethiopia also at dc baba so all these things we got to teach the youth to empower them not to hate but to empower them see what i'm saying so they can move wow. forward because i don't have a hateful bone in my body i can dislike you but i don't hate you because i stand on principles Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. That's the principles that we all need to stand on. That's all this is about. You know, so these so are you So tomorrow, what time will you be at uh, Nandy's uh, Knowledge Cafe? 
2 o'clock. I think it's from 2 to 4, I believe, 2 to 4. So we, 2 to 4? Yeah, I bought a whole lot of, um, le- I mean, the books. We bought DVDs. I did a hip-hop film also um, with KRS-1 and I. We did that a couple years ago. But even that piece you played, that was funny because I was like, where did they find that from? That was an interview. <laughs> Let me tell you all, first of all, I don't know if you saw the video, but the video yes. was done... <laughs> I was actually in um, Texas with the sister Rita G. Rita G was the one that was in Kanye West video, Flashing Lights. That's who that was. She was the one okay. that had the guy in the in the trunk that was hitting him in the trunk with the shovel. That was who that was, okay. Rita G. So <laughs> she she flew me to Texas. I was there for a week. So her brother found that I was there. And he was like, yo, can I do an interview with you? We went into a Barnes and & Nobles. And that conversation just struck up. You know, I'm like, wait a minute. What is this? And I'm listening to it. And I said, wow, that's old. Where did they find it from? Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. So listen, some new news. Uh, DMX uh, versus, versus George Zimmerman. Oh. What do you feel about this, what they're calling the celebrity match? How do you feel listen, about listen, it? Listen, listen, I discussed that, and, and um, I said I was going to talk about that on my show when I get back to L.A. You know, big again, big up to L.A. Talk Live. Um, they, I don't agree with it. You know, when did they start making killers celebrities? Follow me, like, I, I you know, I don't understand... Because he's going to get paid. I disagree with it. You know what I mean? Totally. Because I'm like, why are they even doing that? But we have to understand where we at. They're making killers heroes. You know what I mean? That's mm. really. And he's getting paid. Don't think that, he's, that this man is not getting paid for it. He's getting paid for that. And we're hyping it up. And I saw a couple of petitions going around. I said, why are we signing petitions? Just, you know, the power is in the media. Get with the, pr- the press. You know what I mean? Don't worry about signing petitions. I can look at a petition and say, well, whatever. You know? But we got to be very careful. I'm, I'm against it. Right. You will be again. Nandy's Knowledge Cafe about 2 tomorrow. So you guys get there about 1, 1.30 so you yes. can get a good yeah, yeah. seat. Is this open to the public? Is there a charge? Open, listen, you know? It's open to the okay. public. I don't care if you're a politician. Right. I, don't, I would love the politicians to come out. I love the police to even come in. Because there's a lot of stuff that is going on in this city, in the city's period, with these politicians. And then, I'm going to tell you, says they're not telling the truth about anything. And they say the devil wears Prada. We look for people to come in dressed up. So, like I said, I would invite them out. <laughs> I'm just, you got to check my show out. My shows are raw. I don't, I don't, I have not, listen, I have not seen a raw show than my show. If you go to the LA Talk Live, Sabir Bay show right now, you will actually see all the recaps on this show. Seriously. Okay. All right. And you got to stay connected to the Mason Nation. Most definitely. Okay. Yes, most definitely. All right. I'm here with you. Yeah, you part of the family. Piper is like one of our sisters. We really love her. And then Nandy, the, all you part of the family. So you are welcome anytime. Yes. All right. Yes. Can I give a shout okay, out real quick to my producer? Can I give a shout out real quick? Because my man Mel Jackson actually he was just trying to call in. Uh, he's actually the producer of my show, the actor Mel. You know, he oh, was. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he was trying to call in to this. He said the lines were busy. I would say I was giving him the wrong number. I don't know. I'm just looking at the one on the board. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and um, I, so it's a lot of work we're doing. Um, we're working with, um, trying to work right now with the Marleys. You know, I got the Marley headphones on. You see them, right? Yeah, they look very sweet. Yeah, they're sweet. Yeah, they're sweet. Yeah, they're sweet. Off the hook ain't that. Yeah. Yeah. Miko, yeah, find out about those for me. Yeah, wow, you gotta get them, Chris. Okay, right, right. Okay. Get them. Right, right. Get okay. em. <laughs> gotta get them. Okay. So, Mark, okay, go ahead. So, do you have any closing thoughts that you would like to share with Detroit? And, and really, in your own words, invite them to come and uh, spend time and, and learn from you. So go ahead and talk Listen, to Listen, I would say come out tomorrow because, honestly, the information I'm going to share with people from, from the Hollywood point of view and straight down to the street, man, y'all not going to hear this nowhere else. I'm going to tell you that. Y'all can come with any questions, come with pens and pads. I'm not here to sell you anything at all. It's just about truth. That's about it. You know what I mean? If you want to fix this problem, just come on out tomorrow. It's 2 o'clock, you know? Um, so can I get a number out today? Just in case they're trying to find that place. Some people yes. don't know about it. Yeah, it's yes, two, yeah, it's, yes. Maybe this is the right number too, huh? <laughs> 313-865-1288. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's 313-865-1288. And let me tell you, you should come out too tomorrow too, seriously, sis. Yes, should be there. You know, I, you know what? I'm out of town. Uh, my, I, my, I'm helping my family. My dad passed, and I'm with oh, my mom. She's it. ill, so I'm yeah, I'm in Tennessee. So you pray for me. But I, um, when I get back, I know we'll see each other because you are in the circle. Yes. And again, you're welcome to Mason Radio anytime. Thank you, and anytime. thank this station, man. Thank brother Mason, man. Also, thank your producer over there. That brother's hard working hard. He said, I see him That's in there. Nico. Yeah, I see him in there, man. He's working hard. I like this setup, though. I like this right here. Like so give them the uh, phone number one more time. Yes, 313-865-1288. 
That's tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Mandy's at Knowledge Cafe. Do you have the address? Yep. Uh, I believe you have it. Um, what is this? 1250. Oh, 1250. What? Whoa. 12588 Woodward in um, Highland Park. I thought it was. I don't know. Where is that? But yeah. That's it right there. And you guys know how to hit 411 for more details. We'll give them the phone number one more one time. time. 313-865-1288. All right. And um, I, again, thank you for what you do. Keep that knowledge and that truth going. That's what we do at uh, Mason Radio. Yes, What's your show called again? L.A. It's Sabir the Sabir. Let me correct. Somebody took text me and said, she chopped your name up, Sabir. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Don't kill me, y'all. No, I, I wasn't really mean. They, they, and Nico, they didn't me. you? Nico, I mean, you were trying, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> let, me, let me spell it out. Spell it out for some people. It's S A B I R Sabir Bay. Sabir yes, Bay. B Y. The Sabir Bay. Bay Show on LA Talk Live. Okay. So the Sabir Bay Show on, on LA, Talk, LA Live. Talk Live. All right, and you can get us Mason Radio Detroit. Yes. Dot com anytime yes. you want to. Need you network most, with us. All right. Yeah, most definitely. I would yeah. like to come over yeah. here. Sure. Y'all like this place. <laughs> I just can't. I can't do your code though. That's the only thing. <laughs> Mm. I understand. But we got some spots that'll keep you warm here. So you should sit in this All right. Yes, so again, thank you for coming. Thank you for having my sister Piper out. That's big. And again, you'll be at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe tomorrow about two. So folks get there early. One more time with your phone number. Yes, 313-865-1288. You can contact the store. That's the store numbers. And then we're doing Piper's on Sunday. Um, yeah, that's going to be hot with the youth. I, I, my whole focus right now is just honestly getting to the youth because they're dying like crazy right now. Seriously. So that's where I'm at. Thank you so much. You know what? Your producer, you were saying he was trying to call because we've got to take a quick break, but we can give him another line to call and we can get him in if you can hang out a few more minutes. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I got all this. Is good. that cool? I'm good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to try to get your producer on the line since he was trying to call, and we'll give him a real number to call us. Okay, all right. <laughs> all, right. all right, hold on. Mason has a, a Pistons game tonight, so he's out at the Palace representing for the Mason Nation. In a studio, we have Brother Sabir Bay. Did I do it right? Yes, you did, sister. You got it right this See? time. See? <laughs> She and Miko, yeah. you, we we probably didn't we try. Yeah, we did, we did. I know, we it's, really I know it's did kind of it's, I, not yeah, Billy, yeah. it's not Billy or James. So we <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> or Mel. <laughs> All right, so you said you were getting a producer oh, online. Yeah, yeah, my did producer, you, did he call online. in? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You got to introduce him. Listen, I want to mess his name listen, up. Mel, who? Mel Jackson? Who don't know Mel? You probably had a crush on his brother. What are you talking about? You, y'all, you listen, y'all had crushes on this pretty boy from um, Soul Food. Come on, man. Lick the lips and coke. Body. What? Yeah, oh, come on. Yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah. See, see, see. She getting, look, look, look. There's something dripping Calm in down, it. Edge. Calm Some, down. Something dripping in it. That's dripping in it. Yo, all right now. But, um, yeah, you know, Grace, you know who Mel is. You know, it's Soul Food, Deliverance from Eva. He did The Temptations. He was on, I mean, you name it. The brother did a lot of things. And he's still doing stuff. He's actually got a play. He's doing in Atlanta. Oh, The Temptations. He played yes, he uh, 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 one of the, the musical people. Yes. Smoke, was it Smokey? Norman yes. Norman Whitfield. Norman Whitfield. Right, yeah. Ooh, yes. Little Richard yes, Show. you were excellent in that movie. Did the Little Richard okay. Show. The whole night. I mean, the boy's bad. He's very talented, man. And, and I've known his brother for a minute, but I just got to give a shout out to Bill. He didn't need no really no introduction like that. He's just a pretty yeah, boy. That was a great introduction. Yeah, That's the pretty man. boy, you know? <laughs> He's cool. I'm just, I'm just another artist out here using my God-given talents and ability to be of service to the home. That's it. Yep. Yeah. That's about it. So, I'm a male. I mean, so he's your producer. Yes. Explain the relationship. Well, I, how does this work? How did it work? How did it work, Mel? I, I asked him before this happened. You know, what I mean, because I knew Mel from. I mean, well, how long ago, Mel? And it was so funny that oh, he man. said. Just when, just when, back before Stick Up Kids. Way before Stick Up Kids. Oh, oh yeah, way before that. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we started building, building, like, you know, after Stick Up Kids in New England when I was living in New York. And we just had a, you know, fast, uh, we had a fast friendship and a relationship. And we had just been uh, 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 bouncing ideas back and forth about how we can take our perspectives and put them in the, in the, uh, the structure of entertainment and, and be a service to people. Like, have people have fun, but also still do something that's entertaining as well as enlightening. Yep. Yeah, so, so when I'm looking at your resume, um, Sabir, you're a film producer. Does he work with you in the film part of what you do? What do you guys Not just yet. We, we, work, we work in okay. uh, You know, he's doing a lot of projects where he's at. He's bouncing back, what, from Atlanta to Chicago? So he's doing yeah, stuff there. Chicago, New York, and, uh, 
and uh, and LA just still doing you know LA too. So we didn't get to that point yet. We're working on doing something together um, very soon. But I've been doing like independent stuff myself for right now. Oh yeah, um, oh yeah. So he started up and then working, you know, different. But uh, he started out uh, with a radio show that he's doing. Yes, he started out that way. But but even before that, we were uh, working on the uh, the sitcom, like yeah, a show that's kind of based off of Sabir's life uh, in radio. Believe it or not. Yeah, that's gonna be funny. Yeah. Okay, that's gonna be very funny. You remember how okay. Mark started on the radio, but this will be something a little different, but it'll be uh, Sabir's perspective, and I think that that's, uh, I think it's unique. I mean, if you really know his history, you see that this brother has been through a lot of different changes and a lot of levels that you go through life where you're forced to go through the expansion of your consciousness, and he's been through a lot of them and has been able to weather the storm to be able to take them and put them in a way where he can be of service to people by sharing his experience as well as his knowledge. Yes. All right. That sounds excellent. Okay. Like Martin, now you guys know Mason, who is on the show with me. That show was based off of Mason. Wow. So, okay. yeah. Okay. See, yeah. How, see, how so, see how it works? Aha. Uh -huh. See how that works. So, um, more future plans, because I feel a lot of energy here between the two of you. Oh, yeah. We have fun. We run. So, we just have fun. It's like you just do, you know? You know, you just do it. And we have fun when we link up with each other. Yeah, it's, it, what what Sabir has so many stories. Like he is like uh, in his mind, it's like a computer library of you know reference material of uh, some of everything. But you know the the goal is that uh, to try to take some of the the information about empowerment because that's what really I would say that you know uh, what me and can, me and Sabir connect up at. We, uh, whether it's uh, the economic empowerment. You know, uh, uh, whether it's about self knowledge, self empowerment, like what, whatever you want to uh, call it, that's what me and him connect that. And we're trying to take that instead of being just another brother because we both get invited out to speak a lot. And instead of just being, just doing that part of our work, we're being in front of a podium, you know, or in a pulpit, because even if we're asked to come into those two, like, you know, yeah. for the different, because it's a spiritual journey, and no matter what your belief may be. You know, we're trying to come together to show that, you know, there's a divine intelligence that operates through all of us and it expresses itself as our creative abilities. And if we use those things to be a service to the whole, then we wouldn't want economically. There'll be no lack. But, you know, uh, people don't know how to make that transition. People don't know how to take what they've been given by God and, and make it commercially viable. So hopefully what we can do in addition to uh, creating the projects, the projects that give people uh, employment opportunities, also through the projects that they'll learn how to produce the projects because, uh, you know, Spears are produced also. We're, we're a talent, but we're also producers. That they'll get a chance to learn both sides and they'll be able to create opportunities for themselves instead of sitting back talking about what people are not doing for them or they'll not be validating them for what they're doing. They've been validated from birth. There you go. And that's so I got I, I, I've got to ask this question. I've got to go back to a producer. Just for me, and maybe some people in the audience that don't know, exactly what does a producer do? Well, there's two different kinds of producers. I mean, there, there are different levels of producers. Well, there's like an executive producer that may bring the, either the money and the resources to the project or the, the, the attachments to the project in order to get the project done. Then there are the technical producers that come in and they take those resources and they allocate those resources amongst the, the crew, different heads of the department to make sure that that piece gets done. They have the technical know-how. And then there are other producers that also you get like co-producers and associate producers for, for, for varying reasons. They get those credits because they brought something valuable to the project that would, that helped to push the project forward. So that, those are the producers right. that help to produce the concept, which is the, the screenplay. And you do what type of you the what type of producer are you? Uh, and and that, and that's just the screenplay, but that's also the screenplay, the teleplay, or the theatrical play, or the the webisode, or whatever, or whatever the uh, the content, the, the media is, even radio shows. Because I've also done two radio soap operas that is in the Smithsonian with my partner Tony Green, and I was one of the producers on the TV shows adapted from those radio shows. So I've been I've had the pleasure of going from radio all the way to film, the stage, and, and doing all of the different mediums, and understanding not only it as a talent, but also understanding it from uh, a producer standpoint. Because I started off as an entrepreneur before I got into acting. And see how okay. How and and, works. and at what age did you get started? Because I mean, you I, know, I mean, in the movie, the Temptations, you look pretty young. I mean, how what yeah. age did you get started? Talk about when when did I get started in the entertainment business, or when did I get started as an entrepreneur? Uh, let's just start when you the entertainment business, or maybe which one came first, the entrepreneur or the entertainment business? 
Entrepreneur, definitely. I've been, I've been. Okay, so when did you start? Uh, maybe second grade with uh, icy cups in the house and then moved to Stoke. <laughs> I'm with you. Then moved, <laughs> then moved to the candy store, moved up to, you know, uh, clothing, like you retail the retail stuff like, uh, uh, that, that I would get from different uh, suppliers, I'll say that, from different suppliers. They would get the stuff they supply with me, and I would sell the merchandise. And then I moved from there to on an, uh, a line of hats and jackets that we, we had. We went international with Brother Man, and we were really hot when uh, Carl Kanai was out, you know, Van Grag, Cross Colors, all of that. And then from that, with all of the media that I got on that, people were telling me, no, have you ever thought about either being a comedian or being in front of the camera? And I was like, no, nah, I'm really trying to move these hats because I was trying to be Gordon Gecko. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know, that's, that's right. Yes. But, uh, but, that was but one of my motivators. Yeah. yeah, but as, as God may have it, Sharon King saw me on the bus that day, you know, talking, and she said that I had to look at the character she was looking for for this film, and George Stillman and Bob Title, who were the producers and directors of Soul Food, it was their thesis film out of Columbia, and they were looking for some newcomers, and I was one of the guys that they picked out that they felt like had a, a natural talent. And then, and I really think that that just came because I know about scripts through telemarketing and all the telemarketing stuff I've done. I, I Go ahead, yes. You know See how we, I got to have a team. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? I love it. I said, I got a hell of a team. I love this, man. This is why. Hey, man, but you know, but that's real, though. Because if, if I, I didn't really know anything about scripts, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go to acting school. The only school I'd been to, uh, only play I'd done was in high school when all the jocks had to be in the senior play. But at that particular time, but, you know, from the, from the understanding the script, from the telemarketing, because the way that I was successful in telemarketing is I would take the script and I would make it my own. I would change the dialogue and I would only sell stuff that I would buy myself. And then that way I had like a 89, almost 90% captain percentage for cold calling. But that helped me when I went in for the, uh, the reading for the, for the film. I just picked up the script. I was like, okay, what is this? And they said, they said, you read the character, the casting director is going to read the other side with the uh, producer. I said, okay, so it's reading with comprehension. That's cool. I'm good at that. <laughs> and as I wow. went and from there, now the improv stuff I did, I ended up getting that part and that part. That film got picked up by Joe, uh, who was that? George Jackson, Doug McHenry from New Jack City and, and Poetic Justice and, uh, you know, that, not Poetic Justice, but, uh, Jason's Lyric Fame. They picked up that film, and then that film led to, uh, for them, Soul Food. And then Bob and George, I was the only only person that they brought from their first film, uh, me and the Reverend, uh, that, that were from Chicago. And I got into Soul Food. You know, that's, I got beat out, uh, I think Terrence for that part. He got me for Best Man. I got him for Soul Food. So, you know. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, we, okay, based in radio, we're talking to uh, Mel Jackson, and and before we go to this break, just break down. Give me like three or four movies that you've been in. Be back. I've got some new listeners that have just tuned uh, in. Okay, real quick. We are uh, Soul Food, Deliverance from Diva, Temptations, Uninvited Guests, Motors One and Two, uh, Sir with Love, uh, Stick Up Kids, uh, TV shows, those Living Single, uh, In the House, uh, Steve Harvey, anything black in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you hold on. Both of you guys hold up. We got to take a quick break. And I, I, I just, I got a couple more questions, and I promise I'll let you guys go. Uh, all right, it's all love. Let's do it. Entrepreneurs, or any kind of entrepreneur, because you could start at any level. Before I let you guys get out of here, um, just you, Mel, for someone that's trying to get into the industry and really make a difference in the industry, what, what do you recommend? What advice do you have for them? My, my biggest thing is create, don't wait. You know, there's so many that, that when I came into the industry, I came in, didn't know anything and had to learn all of the ways to get in. And if they, and, and as a, an entrepreneur, that was a person that was actually creating product or, you know, buying and selling product. I looked at the industry different and I think that's what contributed to my longevity in it or as well as my quick rise in it because I looked at it as a business as more so than just an art form. So I was able to understand both sides of it. And I would tell people now that they have an opportunity with the digital media to create things and, and, and distribute them. They don't have to wait like we did, you know, with radio and television and even theater to wait for the promoters and all of the different people that run those things, uh, the advertisers, the networks, in order to get our stuff, our content to the audience. You can do it through Facebook, YouTube, you know, uh, video, you. all these other things. Let me, so you know, I was thinking, right. don't wait, look at my advice. Is that, let me tell you something. When, when I was going to L.A., Thank Mel, you, Mel. Mel, told, I, you, Mel shared this with me when I was going to L.A., he said, don't go and ask them for anything. You know, it's funny. Eddie Griffin said the same thing to me. But Mel gave me so much mm. advice when I went to L.A. 
don't, it said, don't come, you create something. So I went out there and I just started creating things. I was like, I ain't going to ask you, you know, I'm just creating. That's what I'm going to talk about tomorrow in nine days. Also, when I'm there, how you get into it and how you have to create your own avenue. We have everything we need to create it, you know? So I get advice from Mel and many people that's in the industry. So I was just part of what I know and to everybody too. Tomorrow, 2 o'clock, Nandy's Knowledge Cafe. With the, uh, with the topic, it's like that's how we all started in the, with the hip-hop movement. I'm a product of the hip-hop movement. I came in through those cats like George Tillman, uh, uh, Johnson, and he was up under John Singleton and Spike Lee. also worked with Spike Lee's producer, uh, Monty Ross, that did, you know, uh, all those earlier films. Uh, 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 school days, and even I'm, I think he could do some Malcolm X, and she's got to have it. But I'm saying that all of those, all of us are part of that group of people that move with the hip hop movement. That we didn't necessarily have the educational component, where we didn't have the degrees and all of that other stuff behind our name or the paperwork. But we had the product, we had the talent, we had the gift. And 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 with that movement, uh, hip hop created an area for us to go into where they just couldn't keep us out by limiting us with those. Uh, those are uh, the gatekeepers can limit us. That the one thing, the only thing that was limited, that could limit us was how much time we're going to put in energy we were going to put into what we were doing. And we were ready to do it all day and all night. Uh -huh. And if you look at anybody that came through at that time, all of us are still doing it. I mean, look at Queen, look at L, look at everybody that came through and what I like to call the art class. My more chestnut. I love that. Taraji, yeah, Taraji, Gabrielle Union, like you know, everybody that came through, Jamie Foxx, we're all still doing it. <laughs> Still doing it. We got to run. Uh, you guys are welcome anytime on Mason uh, Radio. Mel Jackson, thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, Sabir, you're going to be tomorrow. Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, 2 o'clock. Give them the phone number one more time. It's 313-865-1288. It's 313-865-1288. That's tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Not CP time. You know, color folks time. I don't know. Color people time. Uh, we got it. You know what, Thank I, you, guys. Can I give your, give your listeners to, uh, four quick things that I, I normally like to hear when we do something like this? These are the four principles that have been of great service to me, and I'll share them with you guys. Number one, uh, use your God-given talents and abilities, and you want for nothing. What are your God-given talents and abilities? Those are things you were born with but never taught. Number two, and what if you do with your God-given talents and, and abilities? Make sure you're being of service to the whole. Because if you're of service to the whole, which is the 7 billion people that's on earth, the whole will be of service to you. And if 1% or 1% or 1% of that looks, uh, buys what you do or uses your product or service, that'll be enough to take care of your family for the next seven generations. Number three, when you give... Give from the heart. Don't expect anything back. Because when you expect something back, you can limit your blessing. And four, last but not least, when you receive all the blessings and favor that you, you, you receive from doing one through three, make sure that when the light is shining on you, as it inevitably will be like it's shining on all three of us, make sure you acknowledge where you got it from. Because that's reciprocity. Your thanks and praise and all look for the best. Yes, sir. All right, man. I'll be talking Mel to you. Mel Jackson. Thank you, Mel. My <laughs> Thank you. Yes, All right. Good. I love it. Always It'll be Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, 2 o'clock tomorrow. Thank you guys Peace so much. Bless you. Bless you.